All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So the markets this week, we're just on the last week of the holidays, and it's pr normally pretty dead, particularly when it's coupled with the fact that Non-Farm Friday is out this Friday. Now, we've had some mixed reviews uh, or, or mixed kind of signals on non-farms for the last couple of months. In fact, the forecast was much uh, lower prediction last month, and the, the number came out almost double what was expected this week with uh, this week and this month the forecast is lower as well and the non-farm payroll is kind of the most kind of consistently frequent volatile uh, movement that we see in the market caused by a fundamental news release right so non-farm payroll first friday of every month usually unless the first friday is like the first or the second so what i want to show you is some opportunities, two opportunities that could play out as a result of the non-farm payroll, but also how the technical analysis can be aligned to allow you to get into the trade. And then you can use, you know, if, if the market starts going in the prediction or the, the prediction of the fundamentals play in line with your technicals, you could potentially squeeze more profit out of the trade. So I'm going to show you two, uh, tr two setups. The first one here is on the pound dollar okay so we're looking at the pound dollar and everyone can agree hundreds of traders out of 100 traders agree this market is bearish right top left bottom right lower low lower close uh, we've got a bearish trend however if we just scroll out a little bit here what you're going to see is we if we go out to the uh let's just go out to the daily Right, what you're going to see on the daily is this. Previously, back in 2020, early 2020, just at the start of the pandemic, we saw about a 1,700 pip move, a rollover, not taking a break, not one green candle. And we rolled over from uh, 31.24 all the way down to around 14.84. Okay, it was about 1,650 pip roll over and uh, we hit this level like a brick wall now the start of that zone was around 1610 and the the low of the zone was really around 1486 and that's really the zone that i'm kind of interested in because although we're bearish yes we're bearish right even on the daily we're bearish and we're putting in this you know these bearish move right now Yes, you could argue that you could look for a continuation down and look for shorts down to this level, but you want to bear in mind where we are in the bigger scheme of things. Because what I'm really looking at here is this little zone, all right? In fact, the more point potent zone would be the low of this zone down here, okay? And we're approaching that zone right now. So my eyes are interested uh my ears a little pricked up on the whole announcement of the nfp coming this friday as well but what i want to do now is start to see if market pushes down to that level you know how confident am i in a reaction at that level and how can i potentially get involved so i want to show you that now first of all i'm going to drop down to my trading time frame and i already know that that's a high probability zone there right for a reaction for a buy a buying opportunity, a counter move, a reversal. All right. Um, now, bear in mind, when I'm looking for reversal setups, I'm not greedy. I don't shoot for the moon for targets. I'm just looking for an in out, quick, high probability move where I know the market's got a very high probability of moving so I can get in and out as quickly as possible. Bearing in mind non farm payroll, I don't really want to be holding trades over the weekend either. Um, so, what I'm going to do is just bring on a couple of tools here to. to build out confluence for filtering. So the first thing I love to do is bring on an equal measured move. We know markets move in harmonic ways. We have these harmonic uh, ratios and we have harmonic moves known as uh, equal measured moves. In fact, there's a great book called Trade What You See by Larry Pesavento. I recommend that you go and grab a copy of that book if you're interested in the, the reasoning behind these moves and why they're measured certain ratios, why they're equal and all the rest of it. It's a great, fascinating read. Um, but we've got an equal measured move down there, right? The next thing we could do is bring on a Fibonacci extension to see where the market's likely to extend to based on Fib confluence. And you can see we've got that 1414-1618 in that level as well. So look, we're starting to drill down a nice little zone here for added confirmation that there's likely to be a, a, a reaction at that level. Okay, great. 
What else is down here? Well, we know we've got 1.15 flat. 1.15 flat psychological number there 1.15 flat that's bang on and that's pretty much just below that equal measure of move so great right that's 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 a great thing to uh to see the next thing that i'm interested in is looking at the mac d okay so let's pull on the mac d and you can see we're starting to see some divergence here as well which indicates potentially a reversal setup um, the other thing that you could look at is rsi so you could bring on relative strength index and look at the rsi you might need to change your settings on this depending on your preferences i like the 20 at the low, low 80 at the high and 14 periods fine for this we're looking at a 14 period rsi and we can use that to start to look at divergence for an entry so the the way that i could potentially enter this is once price has pushed down to this low i can <coughs> excuse me i can either look down on the 60 and look for an, a descending channel or a double bottom and if we get a double bottom entry on the pound dollar on the hourly sorry um, I'll be looking to take targets again, not greedy with targets. My targets definitely won't be pushing beyond this previous support level, which just so happens to be support here as well. If you see that, All right? I don't want to push past that. Um, I want to take half of my position off. If let's just say that I'd managed to get involved down here. Um, I want to take half my position off actually here and then the rest of my position off up here. Okay, so I want to be out of the trade completely by the time we hit this level here because I want to take my money and run. I don't want to have to sit in trades, watch the charts for days, weeks, trying to push through resistance when I could just take the money and get onto the next trade. So for the sake of risking anything between 50 and 60 pips to potentially gain um, yeah, a 2.75 to 1 on target 1s and then an additional um profit up here that's a decent looking setup and that's something that i would be happy to uh to to take and entertain so that's the first setup and again i like to share these with you because they haven't happened yet i love the fact that people can't ruin me for showing oh yeah but you only show your winning trades i show everything as i'm looking at it i think that's valuable i'm going to take this trade and you've got it here time stamped and you know how it plays out to give you realistic expectations of what to expect and what real trading is about it's not always about winners okay it's about consistently analyzing the markets a certain way that you know provides you with an edge over time and a profit over time and you're going to see me take losing trades you're going to see me take winning trades but nonetheless you know this these are the setups that I'm looking at and I want to share them with you before they play out so that you guys can follow along and actually gain some value and gain some knowledge, particularly you guys who are newer to trading, which I expect many of you are watching this. So the next one is a New Zealand dollar and you can probably see already it's a similar setup. Okay. Um, now, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, depending on the non-farm payroll uh, release, if that plays in your favor, and the dollar's weak against the pound, then that's gonna, you know, that's gonna rally up and play into that. So that something to bear in mind if you if you're looking at managing the trade. Then the New Zealand dollar, we're already at structure, right? This is a bearish trend, and we're, what we're seeing here is a potential reversal. You can see the MACD is uh, got divergence, not convergence. We've also got divergence here and not convergence. Convergence is playing in, li in line with the trend. Divergence is showing uh, opposite to price action, which indicates a reversal in trend. And we're also, if we look left, we had this low test candle wick. We had a doji. We pushed down again. We've tested this level again. And look, if we draw on our horizontal line, look at that. Price action being very respectful of that support level. Okay. So now this one, unlike the pound, this is already at market. So how can we get involved? If we go down to the trading time frame, you can see still respectful of that zone. Now with this one, there's a couple of things I can do. Um, one on the four hour, I can just wait for a, a three bar reversal. So if this candle closes higher, then I can enter this. And again, targets would be at resistance. I wouldn't be looking for mega targets. Uh, one here, target one at 61.66. Target two would be up here at 62.23. 
and that's where my target would be. And it would all depend on whether I can enter because if this closes right up here, then I can't enter because it's not giving me a one-to-one -to, -one to target ones. Or I can drop down to the 60 and wait for a retest on the 60. So if we get a retest down here, a double double uh, bottom, you can see RSI is oversold here. Okay, if we get a double bottom with RSI divergence, then I can use the double bottom, get tighter stops and still uh, keep the same targets. So that will offer me a great reward to risk profile. So those are the two trades that I'm looking at. One is kind of present in the zone, ready to go. And I'm just waiting for either a higher, higher, higher close or a, a double bottom on the hourly with a valid double bottom with a divergence and everything. And on the pound, I'm looking for um, price to push into that zone a little bit so that then I can start uh, analyzing price, looking at price action patterns, looking for candlestick formations, and then looking at my entries and executing the trade. So those are the two on the radar. Non-farm tomorrow, be careful out there. And uh, if you would like to share with me how you would approach this or what you're looking at on this pair or the New Zealand dollar or any other pair, please let me know in the comments. And until next time, take care, have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you then. <laughs>